in tonight's contest as we are getting ready for the tip-off between the Mullins Rebels and the Pineville Minutemen. As we said earlier, and that's exactly what has transpired, uh, Bill Bishop will be starting in place of Bart Houck. Bart Houck has uh, both ankles sprained not severely, but certainly enough to, uh, for Coach Ellison to try to give him just a little bit of rest. Both coaches now giving their last minute instructions. I love this kind of competition, Tim. It is what it's all about. I'll tell you what, Butch, this is a uh, classical matchup. We have two of the finest officials in the state of West Virginia with us again tonight. We have Ray Vest and Marv Pennington. That we saw Wednesday night in the Pineville Bramble game. All right. Jacobs will be jumping against Webb. We are in the press box. Mullins will have the goal underneath us. And at the far end will be the Minutemen's goal. Officials getting ready. Tap up and the Minutemen control as Jer Brown gets control of the ball. Takes it down the left side. Almost stolen inside. It is stolen by the Rebels. It comes Clyde Cosmo. A fast break stolen by Webb. Down underneath the half jump. Up off the rim, Webb gets the rebound, shoots, it's good, and the Rebels take the first lead of this contest. Ball rolled around, Webb got it, put it back up. Off of Bart Hout, or the Brad Hout, shot but missed. Rebels on top, two to nothing, first quarter. Here comes the Minutemen inside of Jacobs, high lobbing pass, stolen once again by Webb. He gets it out on the wing to Hout, out to Sizemore. And Sizemore walks it past the double circles. Looks inside, takes a jump shot, passes to Houck, Houck to the wing to Webb, Webb back out front to Sizemore, over to Houck, Houck looking, over to Bishop in the corner, back out to Mark Sizemore, and Clyde Sizemore from three-point range, up off the back of the rim, Jacobs, a dominating rebound, gets it out to Williams, and Williams crosses the half-court line, passes it over to Brown, Brown takes a shot, then pulls it back, passes it to McKinney from three-point range, it's good! Chalk it up, Jay McKinney, three to two. Angle with a one-point lead. Here comes Clyde Sizemore, angle right pass to Sizemore, Mark Sizemore, back to Clyde, Clyde over to Mark, inside the web, and they're calling a foul inside against Jacob, I believe. Ever so gently popped his elbow up on one of the Rebels, and the officials called it. That'll be his first foul with 6.32 left in the first quarter. Pineville on top, 3-2. To Out front to Clyde Sizemore, over to Hout, back to Sizemore at the point. Driving inside, shoots up, and they call a foul. Clyde Sizemore hung in the air long enough to get fouled. And that's the second team foul against the Minutemen early in the contest. I have one top three to two. Let's take out the personal foul on number 24, Gary Williams. That'll be Pineville's second team foul. Here comes Sizemore over to Hout. Hout to Webb in the corner. Pass to Clyde Sizemore and Jeff Brown. A little too aggressive against Sizemore. This is the personal foul is called on number 20, Jerry Brown. That'd be team foul number three. The minute playing a little bit aggressive out of this 2-3 zone. Brad Hout, and Brad Hout, excuse me, inbounds it to Clyde Sizemore over to Brad. Brad looks inside, but gives it to left. Three point out off the front of the iron and out of bounds to the minute men. Here come the minute men. Brown gets it. Brings it across the half court line. Dribbling with his left hand, drives, pass to McKinney inside, driving, backing in, shoot, off the back of the backboard. Gives it to Sizemore, rebound by Tommy Webb, the sophomore, and Clyde Sizemore walks it across, passes left to Brad Houck, 
And they're calling a foul against Tommy Webb, pushing off on the inside. Tommy trying to jockey for a position, and the referee's caught it. As McKinney brings it in, John McKinney inbounds it to Jared Brown. Jared dribbling at the point, pass right to McKinney. To John, to Brown, he shoots off the back of the rim, and the rebound up and tapped in by Jacobs. Brown's shot came off the front of the iron. Jacobs right there and tapped it in, five to two. First quarter action, Guy Sizemore, bounce pass right to Mark Sizemore, drives inside, shot up, and it's off the front of the rim. Rebound by Bishop, up, and it's blocked by Jacobs on the inside. Here comes Brown, Buck Williams off the back of the iron. Jared Brown gets the rebound, struggle for it, then the Rebels, Brad Houck takes it away from him and passes it over to Clyde Sizemore. As he brings it at the half-court line, holding up a fist to signal an offensive play. He drives inside, shot up. It's off the back of the rim, and McKinney gets the rebound. John, as he passes it over to Gary Williams. 446, Pivel on top, 5-2. To There's a pass inside to John McKinney. It's up, it's good. Pivel stretching the lead now to 7-2. to two. Rebels have not been able to sink anything. They've had good shots and haven't been able to make it. There's Brad Hout pass inside to Mark Sizemore. Fake up. It's blocked by, I believe it was John McKinney who blocked it. And then as uh, Mark Sizemore went up again, he was fouled this time by John. Chris puts the personal foul will be on John McKinney, number 10. Chris first personal foul. Team foul number four early here in the first quarter. Now the Rebels are getting some good inside shots, but they are also a little intimidated right at this point by the height of that inside line of the Minutemen. Here's the foul shot up and good by Mark Sizemore. Seven to three. 425 left in this first quarter of action. Mark dribbles, shoots, off the front of the rim, nope, didn't hit anything. But they're calling a foul against Jacobs. Wow. I'm sure Coach Stewart wants him to settle down a little bit. He has to be concerned with two fouls against Jacobs. And in fact, he calls a timeout. With the Minutemen leading the level 7-3, we'll be back on your South County Sports Network. Come back out onto the floor, 425, left in the first quarter. And the Rebels will be shooting. Tommy Webb. And that's two very important fouls, Tim, against James Jacobs. Yes, it is, but that will put the Mons Rebels in the one and one the rest of the first half. And that, I don't know a lot about basketball, but isn't this a little early for a one and one? Oh, I'm telling you, it sure is. Shot up by Webb, it's good. Seven to four. Five team fouls against Pineville. Mitch, with these early fouls, we might have a long contest tonight. Next shot up, nothing but net for Webb. Five to seven, Pineville on top. Harmon brings it down. Out front to Williams at the point, driving inside, jump shot up, off the back of the rim, and they call a foul on the inside against the Rebels. Which the personal foul was caught on Brad Hout, his first personal foul, team foul number two against the Rebels. The officials are calling this one close. Here they are. John McKinney brings it in bounds to Harmon. Harmon inside, jump shot up, and good by Gary Williams from about eight feet out. Gary had a phenomenal game against Bramwell. Here comes Ryan Sizemore at the point. Pass left to Houck. Houck back to Clyde, driving inside. Pass to Bart Houck, who's inside, in there now for Bishop. Shot up by Sizemore, Mark Sizemore, and they call three seconds against the Rebels. That shot was good, but they won't count it. Now, Bart Houck and Brad Houck brothers are in now for the Mullins Rebels. Brad Houck replacing Bill Bishop. There's a bounce pass inside to Jay McKinney. Jump shot up and good. Nope, off the back of the iron. Tipped around. And Brad Howe gets the rebound. Boy, I thought that was going in. Here comes Clyde Sizemore. Down fast. Shot up. Off the front of them. No good. Minutemen scramble for the rebound. And finally, Jay John McKinney comes down with it. 
And he passes to Harmon. Harmon brings it down quickly. Baseline right, backing up. Now he's going forward, passing over to Gray Williams at the point. Back to John McKinney. John over to the right-hand side. That pass was good. Shot was good. The basket was made by Fred Hatfield, who just checked into the ballgame, Butch. All right, thanks. I didn't see that. Fred Hatfield makes it 11 to 5 for the Minutemen. Here comes Webb looking to shoot, but doesn't. Ryan Sizemore pass right to Mark Sizemore. Mark back to the point to Clyde. Almost lost control, but regains it. Pass left to Tommy Webb. Back to the point. Sizemore pass inside hard to Mark Sizemore. Could not handle it. A shotgun pass going to Mark Sizemore. But they say it went off Fred Hatfield's hands, and the Rebels will retain possession. Mark Sizemore will be in inbounding it. He passes to Clyde Sizemore from the corner, pass inside to Webb, spinning out, shot up, and off the back of the iron. Webb steals it, shot up, off the front of the rim, gets it again, and scores. Wow. You might call that perseverance on the part of Tommy Webb, got the rebound three different occasions, and put it up 7 to 11. A little commercial. Here's a shot from outside, missed everything. John McKinney from about 12 feet out. He didn't hit anything, but there was a foul inside. That's the personal foul was caught on Tommy Webb, number 42. That will be his second personal foul. Team foul number three against the Rebels. Now that makes Tommy Webb, along with James Jacobs, both with two personals here early in the first quarter. Out front. And here comes Jay McKinney, jump shot from about six feet out. No good. Blood how gets a rebound quickly to Sizemore down the middle, driving, shot up. Off the back of the rim, stolen by Mark Sizemore, drives inside, jump shot up and good by Mark Sizemore from about 12 feet out. 11 to 9. Remember, Jacobs has two fouls on him in that play, and here's a jump shot by Gary Williams. It's good. 13 to 9. Clyde Sizemore, bounce pass left to Brad Houck, over to Sizemore to Brad Houck, tapped inside, Fred Houck steals the ball, down quickly to Gary Williams, left side, jump shot up, it's good, beautiful shot, but they call charging, and no good. Woo. I am glad I don't officiate. 135 left in the first quarter, the Rebels trailing Hyville 13 to nine. And coming back in now, wait a minute, that's uh, Gary Williams is going to the bench and Joe Brown coming in. This that will be the second person to found Gary Williams, team foul number six. We will not be in a bonus because that is an offensive foul. All right, Clyde Sizemore walking it down, played tightly out front by Ray Harmon. Harmon's very quick. Here comes Sizemore, jump shot up again, off the front of the rim, no good. And they call a foul this time. Yes, but they called a charging foul on Clyde Sizemore that time. That'll be team foul number four. It makes three times we've seen Clyde drive down through the middle. That time, Ray Harmon got up in his face and drew the charge. Kyle with Jacobs and Williams on the bench early in the first quarter. And there's a foul inside that's going to be against Brad Howe. Butch, that will be Brad Hout's second personal foul. Team foul number five. The Minutemen will be in the bonus for the rest of the first half, and we have Mr. Automatic at the line, and that's all I'm going to say, because the other night, every time I brought down a foul shooter, I jinxed him. Yeah, you did. 1.17 left in the first quarter. The Minutemen, 13, the Rebels, 9. Jay McKinney, dribble, shoots. It's good. 14 to 9. Joe Brown, Fred Hatfield, Ray Harmon, John and Jay in for the Minutemen. Next shot up. It's good. Tommy Webb in down a full court plus now put on by the Minutemen. Mark Sizemore trapped in the corner, gets it to Sizemore in the middle, feed pass out front, saved by Mark Sizemore as he drives behind the back dribble and stops, holds it up. And hands it off to Clyde Sizemore. A lot of pressure put on by the Minutemen. Rebels have a little trouble, but broke it. 
There's Brad Hauk wanting some help out in the corner. Back to the deep point to Clyde Sizemore. Here's Sizemore bounced inside, inside the web, off the back of the iron. Brad Hauk gets the rebound and puts it in. Now, Tommy Webb's getting his shot. It's just not falling, and that time, Bart Hauk is right here. Here's McKinney. Bounce pass inside to John McKinney. And the scrub, the Minutemen score, make it 17 to 11. Here come the Rebels. Down quick to Tommy Webb driving. Bounce pass fake. Shot up, no good. And a foul on John McKinney. At that time, Tommy Webb came down, faked the pass inside to Tommy Webb, went up with the shot and was fouled. This the personal foul is on John McKinney, number 10. That'll be his second personal foul. Ooh. Nice move by the sophomore. I thought he was going to pass the ball, and then all of a sudden he jerked it back, made him move to the outside, and hung in the air. And checking in for the minimum right now will be number 44, Chris Mayhew. Can you believe all the substituting already? Shot up by Tommy Webb is good. 17 to 12. 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Next shot up. Off the back of the rim, Hatfield gets the rebound and passes it out to Harmon. Harmon at the deep point, bounce pass right to Brown. Brown in the corner of McKinney, back to Brown. Brown, shoehorn pass inside the Hatfield, jump shot up, it's good. And there's a foul against Mark Sizemore. Beautiful shot. That time by Hatfield, a far away jump shot. And that makes it 8, 19 to 12 with 15 seconds left here in the first quarter. The personal foul is called on Mark Sizemore. His first, team foul number seven. The leading score in the contest right now is Tommy Webb with seven points. One and one. Shot up. It's good. Chris Mayhew making the best of his early action. Bounces, stops, releases. It's off the front of the rim and rebound by Fred Hatfield, but there's a foul uh -oh, against the Rebels. Is it a foul or did he say move into the lane too quick? We had a Rebel move into the lane too quick, and that's a no-no. You have to wait till the ball leaves the shooter's hand before you can step into that painted area, but Redemption for Chris as he gets a third shot at it. It's up. It's off the front of the rim, rebound by Webb. Underneath, gets it out to Brad Howe. He gets it to Sizemore coming down the middle as he holds things up, backs back outside. Holds up some hands, shot from three-point range. Nothing but net. Beautiful shot by Clyde Sizemore right at the buzzer. And that makes it 20 to 14 as we end the first quarter of action. The Minutemen on top, 20 to 14. And we'll be back on the South County Sports Network. Regine's Gulf in Pineville. We offer 24-hour wrecker service with five dispatch wreckers and mobile home moving at your service. And we offer custom exhaust systems installed. Give us a call at 732-8310. The nighttime number is 732-6778. Regine's Gulf and Wrecker Service. Located right in Del Mons High School, Pineville. Leading the Rebels 20-15 with mass substitutions. I'm sure uh, Coach Stewart extremely concerned about that, but it's uh, still encouraging to know your team has a five-point lead and you're playing with some of your substitutes. That's some quick stats. The leading scorer for Mullins is Tommy Webb with seven, and for the final minimum is Jay McKinney with five. All right, here comes the Rebels. Hawk looks, passes back to Clyde Sizemore over to Bart. Hawk, Bart drives, passes back to Clyde. Clyde takes a three-pointer, drives inside, shot up, and it is off the back of the rim. Jacobs back in, gets a rebound, stolen by Mark Sizemore. He drives, jump shot up, pump fake. It's well in the left end, but it makes it 20-17. to 20-17. That three-pointer at the buzzer gave the Rebels 15 points. Here's a jump shot by Williams, who's back in also. He misses, and the Rebels get the rebound. Clyde Sizemore coming down quickly, drives inside. It's good as the Rebels throws it to within one, 20 to 19. The Rebels put on a full court press, no problem by the Minutemen. Gary Williams gets it down to McKinney. McKinney jumps shot up, and good. Jay McKinney. As the Minutemen broke that press with ease, 
seven minutes left in this second quarter, 22 to 19, time one top. Here's Mark Sizemore in the corner, back to five, three point range, up off the back of the rim. Jacob snaps it out to John, to Jay McKinney. Jay drives and tried a behind the back pass. It got stuck on his, what you might say, lower back, and uh, <laughs> he walked with it. Boy, at first I thought he was going to pull that off because he had a wide open yep. brother and under for the assist. But, you know, Mullins is doing a fine job against this 2 3 zone. He worked the ball. I mentioned at the top of the broadcast they would have to get it inside. And there's timeout on the, on the court. Brian Sizemore looks injured. And we'll be back to score final 22, Mullins 19 on your South County Sports Network. Front, right in downtown Mullins. We have six minutes, 43 seconds left in the second quarter. And Pineville leading the Rebels 22 to 19. Pineville in uh, extremely early foul trouble, but they have the starters back in with Jacobs, Gary Williams, and Jay McKinney. Also in is Harmon, Ray Harmon, and John McKinney. Here come the Rebels, that hot passing right to Mark Sizemore. Deep corner, bounce pass to Brad. Brad looking inside. Bishop in now for the Rebels. As he passes back to Hauk, Hauk over to Brad. There's a shot by the Rebels. Tommy Webb off the back of the rim. And they call a foul against Brad Hauk on the inside. But that'll be Brad Hauk's first personal foul. Team foul number seven. The Minutemen will go to the line shooting a one-on-one. -on -one. I'd like to take this time out to um, welcome Bill Tobler, who is sitting here beside me. He looks like wherever we go, he goes anymore. McKinney shot up. It's good. Nothing but net. John McKinney shooting the foul shot for the minute man. You know, you know about uh, Bill, I mean, uh, Butch. I'm Butch. Get, used to working with Bob all the time. <laughs> You know, Bill does a great job in covering our Wyoming County teams in the uh, rest of the half to us. He sure does. No doubt. There's the second shot by McKinney. It's off the back of the rim. Brad Hop scrambles, but McKinney gets his own rebound. John McKinney I'm talking about. Here's a jump shot from three-point range. No good by Harmon. Dominating rebound by Mark Sizemore. That's pass to Clyde. He's back in for the Rebels. Over to the left to Brad Hout. Brad looking inside, passes to Mark Sizemore. He drives, takes, shot up, and blocked by Jay McKinney. And here comes Harmon. Across the timeline. Inside to Jay, back out to Harmon. Inside to Williams. Williams driving, jump shot up from 12 feet out. Off the front of the rim. And rebound by Jay McKinney. He's fouled. Pineville is very tough to stop inside. They have guys who are tall, coordinated, and they position themselves extremely well in that offensive field. Let's just think that they had Scott Belcher this year who had to transfer to a school in Virginia. His parents moved down there for a job reason. Just think that they had him along with Jacobs. There's a shot up by McKinney off the back of the rim. Bart Hout gets the rebound. And Sizemore brings it down. Angle White right, dribbling, pass to the corner to Mark Sizemore. Inside pass to Bud Hout, jump shot up, and off the front of rim, scramble for the rebound. Webb gets it, puts it up and in. Now, Pineville Jacobs and Jay McKinney had it, and were fighting each other for it that time. And Rebels got the loose ball. And here's an out-of-bounds play that goes to the Rebels. As the Miniman having a little difficulty with the press put on by Mullins. Clyde Sizemore, the score 23 21, Pipe up by two. Clyde Sizemore out front, back to Bart Hout. Inside the web, driving, jump shot up, and they call traveling. Tommy Webb got caught underneath the backboard and was trying to wedge his way out and couldn't quite make it legally. Here's the press by the Rebels. Williams brings it down with no problem. Driving inside, pass right to Jacobs. Shot up, good. But no, they call walking against. James Jacobs, a beautiful transition. Williams all the way down, looked for the shot and just scooped it underneath to Jacobs, laid it in, but they called walking. Mitchie must have, uh, when he went up for the shot, took an extra jab step with his pivot foot. Nice pass though by Gary Williams. 
I couldn't tell from who is it. Beautiful. Ryan Sizemore brings it down, 23-21, 5-1 top. Back to Sizemore up front, to Mark Sizemore, drives on side. Clyde Sizemore has the open shot, jump shot up, and it is off the front of the rim. Clyde short most of the night on that jump shot. Here comes Harmon down quickly to Hatfield. Hatfield has it almost stolen by Mark Sizemore, but Pineville regains possession over to John McKinney. Back up front to Harmon at the foul line. Over to John McKinney, shot up, and it's in and out. And rebound by Williams, shot up, no good. Scramble for the rebound underneath, and they call a foul. This time against, at, against the Rebels, I believe. The foul will be on Tommy Webb, number 42. That will be his third person to foul. That puts the sophomore into foul trouble. Coach Elson will have to go to the bench. He will bring in number 20, number 20 Randy Hurst. Randy Hurst, six foot five. Coming in as the Rebels are also in a little foul difficulty. Here's Jay McKinney shot up and it's in and out. Jay McKinney scrambles for the rebound. The Rebels have it and they knock it out of bounds. Fighting each other for the ball. 23 to 21. Close contest as you might expect. There's the Miniman, Gary Williams at the point. Pass right to Harmon, back to Williams. Williams looking, bounces, dribbles. Jump shot up by Harmon, off the back of the rim. Big rebound by McKinney, lays it in. Jay McKinney, 25-21. Four minutes and 12 seconds left here in the first half. There's Bart Hoff looking for some help in the corner. Back to Sizemore, bounce pass to Mark Sizemore. Here's Hurst with it outside to Bradhout. Bad to the point to Sizemore. Over to Mark. Sizemore, nothing but net. Mark Sizemore, beautiful jump shot, 23-25. Here's the pressure. Stolen by Mark Sizemore, lays it up, and it's in and out. Clyde Sizemore gets the rebound off the back of the board. High off the back, but it's good. Game's tied up, 25 apiece. Here comes Williams down quickly. Bounce pass inside to McKinney. Jump shot up. No good. As they call a foul against Hout. Give me a break. Well, yeah, I tell you, Butch, um, Mullins, what they like inside, they're making up for hustle. I tell you, they just got scrapping. He found the Minutemen on their own end of the board. It seems like that the Rebels are playing with a little bit more enthusiasm. Maybe that the Minutemen have a little, what we call jet lag from Wednesday night with a big <laughs> win over uh, Bram. I hope it's not jet lag. If it is, they got problems here. There's Williams, jump shot up from the foul line. It's good, 26 to 25. Williams fouled before he made that good pass to Jay McKinney. 26 25, 338 left in the first half. Pitched that last foul was on Brad Houck, his third person. Shot up, in and out, and Brad Houck gets the rebound. Over to Brad, Brad to Clyde. Clyde walks across the double circles at the point. Drives inside, pass to Brad Houck, loses control, but regains it. Over the host in the deep corner. Back to the point to Mark Sizemore. Back to Clyde. Clyde fakes up. And he throws a walk. Oh. Had a good little jump shot from about 12 feet out, but he walked with it. And Pineville will get it back, leading 26 to 25 with three minutes and 20 seconds left. Miss, that is one thing you cannot get over on these great officials. I tell you, the other night in the Pineville Burma game, we just had nine of these. They are great at picking that little shuffle step up. All right, there's Harmon. Trapped in the corner, deep pass inside to Hatfield. Hatfield, up, oh, they call a foul on Mark Sizemore. The personal foul was on Mark Sizemore, his second personal foul. At the line will be Fred Hatfield. Fred has scored a total of four points up until this point in the ball game, Butch. 26-25, shot up, off the back of the rim, rebound by Hurst, way up in the air. For Randy Hurst, here comes Clyde Sizemore, Rebels 12 by one, Brad Howe in the corner, over to Sizemore at the point, back to Howe. The Hurst in the corner, to Clyde, to Mark at the point, over to the right-hand side, angle pass to Brad Howe. Mark out, driving inside at the point, jump shot up, and good! Mark Sizemore, beautiful touch, 27 to 26. The Rebels take the lead, and here's a trap at half court by the Rebels, and the Rebels steal the ball, and it's out of bounds. Goes to Pineville. All right. 
that's, that will be the first lead for the Rebels since the opening kickoff here of the first period. I was thinking that it was probably the first lead. I wasn't sure. I would hate to have uh, made that, that mistake and said it was. Uh, here comes the Rebels Williams out to half good, half good, rounding the horn. Stolen by Clyde Sizemore. He drives down, passes to Brad Hart. He drives in and no good, but they call a foul. I think it's going to, they're going to call it against the minute at half court against Clyde Sizemore. Beautiful hustle. A lot of quickness has been exhibited by the Rebels at this point. I think Clyde Sizemore is running the point direct for the Rebels. The personal foul was on Fred Hatfield. His first personal foul at the line would be Clyde Sizemore. Clyde has a total of seven points on tonight's contest. There's a shot up by Sizemore off the back of the rim, and Jacobs with a big rebound. He gets it out to Jay McKinney, back in the middle to Gary Williams. He brings it down quickly inside, pass to Jay. Jay jump shot up off the front of the rim. And rebound by Mark Sizemore. Clyde brings it down quickly, driving. Lays it up, and it is good. Great. Wild Sizemore against three minute men. Wedged in between them and laid it in. A little scoop shot underneath Jacobs. And here comes Gary Williams dribbling. Gets it down for the minute men. And he passes inside to Jacobs. Jacobs inside to McKinney. Jump shot up and off the front of the rim, but he's fouled by Bart House. Nice passing that time by Pineville. And Jay McKinney will go to the line as the Minutemen trail 29 to 26. This the personal foul was on Bart House. That will be his third personal foul. The Rebels now have three people with three fouls. That's going to hurt him. That's unbelievable. Teams fouling abundantly. Here's a shot by McKinney. In and out by Jay McKinney. Bits on the night. Jay has a total of nine points. He's only two for five from the check. And he made that last one. It makes it 27 29. Rebels on top, 157. And the Rebels in no hurry to bring it down as Clyde walks methodically across. The half forward line passes to Mark Sizemore in the corner, back out to Sizemore, Clyde, over to Mark on the left side, to Hurst. Hurst almost lost control, but Brad Hopp regains control. Clyde at the deep point, pass left to Brad Hopp, deep corner to Hurst. Hurst looking for a little help, gives it to Clyde Sizemore. A lot of pressure been put on by Brown. Sizemore drives in, lays it in, it's good. Clyde Sizemore eating that middle alive on his drives inside, 31 to 27, 119 left in the first half. Here's John McKinney in the corner. Gary Williams out front to the point of Brown. Brown drives inside, pass underneath, and John McKinney trying to get position. The ball underneath him just a little bit. Mitch Clyde Sizemore has come on in this quarter to score a total of 11 points. That went out of bounds to the Rebels. One minute, four seconds. 31-27, Rebels on top. Brad Hawk has it up front. Mark Sizemore takes it. He's at the deep point. A lot of pressure been put on by Williams. Double team, he passes to Brad Hawk. Relieves a little bit of that pressure. Here comes Brad Rippling, passes out to the deep point once again to Clyde Sizemore. Clyde, oh, the ball is stolen almost by Jay McKinney, but Brad Hawk gets it back and is fouled by Jared Brown. And they were playing that game right at the midcourt line. Yes, they were, but uh, the foul was on Jared Brown. His second personal foul. At the charity stripe will be number 10, Brad Howe. Rebels on top, 31 to 27. 42 seconds left in the second quarter of action. Brad Howe shot up. It is good for Brad. 32 to 27. Rebels shot up. It's good. 33 to 27. Here comes Gary Williams trotting it across the half court line. Pass right to Brown. Back to the point to Williams. Williams looking left. Pass to Jay McKinney. Back to Williams. Three point range up and off the back of the rim. Pineville inside the rebound. They lose control. Williams gets it back. Shot up and good. Beautiful follow up by Williams as he came inside. Got the rebound and put it up. 33 to 29, 18 seconds. Clock running, Sizemore bringing it down. Been pursued tightly by Brown at the half foot line. That was a double team against Sizemore. He tries to dribble through it and he's fouled. Williams, Jay McKinney, and Brown were covering Clyde Sizemore right at midcourt. Clyde tried to go through him and was fouled. 
Looks like the personal foul will be on number 22 for Pinewood, okay. Jay McKinney. Jay McKinney. That will be his first personal. Clyde Sizemore will be at the line shooting a 1-1. He has a total of 11 points tonight. All right. 10 seconds. 10 seconds left in the first half. Shot up. It's no good. In and out. Jacobs gets the rebound. Minutemen, seven seconds. Williams bringing it down. Five seconds. Jump shot by Williams. Up and good by the Minutemen with two seconds. One. And that's the end of the first half. And we have got a good, good ball game. Rebels lead 33 to 31. And we'll be back in your South County Sports. This is gymnasium with the Mullins Rebels. Leading the time of men again, 33 to 31. And again, we'd like to thank Keith Cook, who is videotaping the game. You can see it tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on Channel 3 on the Pineville Cable Company. Looking at some stats for the first quarter, looking for the Mullins Rebels, they were letting scoring by Clyde Sizemore with 11, Mark Sizemore with 9, Tommy Webb with 9, and Bart Houck with 2, and Brad Houck with 2. The Rebels in the first half only turned the ball over 5 times, had 19 rebounds, very impressive committed 12 fouls. They were 6 for 10 from the charity strike. Looking at the bottom of the minute, man, they were laying scoring by Jay McKinney with 10, Gary Williams with 9, John McKinney with 5, Fred Hatfield with 4, and James Jacobs with 2, and Chris Mayhew with 1. Surprisingly, the minute man turned the ball over 11 times, had 18 rebounds, committed 10 fouls, was 6 for 13 from the charity strike. Looking at foul trouble for the Rebels, Brad Houck has three, Tommy Webb has three, and Bart Houck has three. Looking at the Minutemen, Gary Williams has two, James Jacobs has two, John McKinney two, and Jerry Brown two. Very exciting contest here in Mullins. A nice crowd on hand tonight. This crowd's getting treated to an excellent contest with the halftime score being 33 to 31 in favor of the Mullins Rebels. Right now, we'll take a 60-second break and return you to C92, your South County Sports Network. Gymnasium with the Mullins Rebels leading 33 to 31. And right now, I have a guest in the booth with us tonight, Bill Talbert, the sports editor for the Beckley Post Hell. Bill, how did you think the first half went for both ball clubs? I think the key so far is the fact that Mullins has been able to control the boards late in the first half, first quarter, then through the second quarter, and get their fast break going. And as you, when you were mentioning the turnovers, they've been able to keep control of the ball and not make the careless mistakes, the bad passes, the turnovers. And that's what's given them the lead. Uh, Pineville appears to be playing tentative on the backboards. They're only getting one shot a lot of times. Yes, uh, as we look at the stats, the uh, Mullins out rebounded by one, but the Minutemen turned the ball over six more times. It looks as though that they, uh, like you said, they're just not scrapping for the ball. What do you think both clubs will have to do to come back out to win this game? I think Pineville has to, has to control play on the inside because then they can control the tempo. If Mullins controls the inside, they're going to be able to go as fast as they choose. All right, back to action. Butch hasn't got back, so I'll take the play-by-play -play right now. Right now, it's Jay McKinney for a three-pointer. Off the rim, rebound to Mullins, Clyde Sizemore. Pass into Brad Halkin. He loses it out of bounds. And back to you, Butch. <laughs> I got stuck back out of the popcorn stand. Getting the munchies again. <laughs> I didn't get it. I didn't even make it out there. But then the Minutemen pass inside to McKinney. Lays it up and good. Jay McKinney, 33 to 33. I didn't get nervous this time walking out Bailey's bill. <laughs> you all tell me, never leave at halftime, but I get hungry and I have to go. But yeah, there's no way you're making it out there this time. There's a pass inside to Brad Howe. Back out the point for Brian Sizemore. Brad backs it up, almost a half court. Pass left to Brad. Brad back to Mark. Mark takes, jumps inside, up and off the back of the rim. Scramble for the rebound. Jacobs gets it, loses it. Bart Howe gets it. Bounce pass inside the web. He lays it in. Nice perseverance on the part of the Rebels. And, of course, Bart Howe, 35-33. Pressure by the Rebels. Here comes Harmon, brings it down. Grab it closely, brings it inside to McKinney. McKinney jump shot up and rolls it up. It's good. Took that one a light year to get in there, but it made it 35 to 35. Third quarter action. Right size more passing right. For Mark, Mark inside to Hout. Rolls around and good. 
line side pass by Mark Sizemore into Bart Houghton. Bart puts it in, 37-35. Here's Jay Williams back to the point to Harmon. Harmon bounce pass right to Jay. Back to Harmon. Harmon holding up his hands. The deep point pass inside to Jay McKinney, who came around underneath. Inside to Gary Williams. Jump shot. Didn't hit anything. Missed it. Out gets the rebound. Clyde drives. Lays it up. No good. And he is fouled by Harmon, I believe. Ray Harmon. The personal foul will be on Ray Harmon, his first personal foul. Team foul number one. This I'd like to thank Bill Tolbert for his uh, opinion on the game here. He, you know, um, he does this throughout when he covers our Lyman County teams. I'd like to thank him for that. Bill Tolbert and uh, the Beckley Post Herald has always given Wyoming County a lot of publicity. Here's a shot by Sizemore off the front of the rim, no good. That's a shooting a foul shot. Next shot up, it's good. 38-35. As John McKinney brings it in to Harmon, Harmon brings it down off the right side. Pass right to McKinney, back to Harmon at the point. Bounce pass left to John. John inside to Jay. Jay dribbles back outside to Harmon at the point. Pass inside to Jay. Three-point range. Pass inside to Williams. Jump shot up. Off the back of the iron. Rebound by Clyde Sizemore. He brings it down by himself. Pass off to the right to, I believe it's Webb. And no good. As Jacob gets the rebound, and it was Mark Sizemore who looked like he twisted his knees just a little bit. Gary Williams passes it around the horn to McKinney. McKinney bounce pass inside, and he goes to John McKinney. He lays it in. Nice working, good passing by the Minutemen as they make it 37-38. They trail by one. Here's Clyde Sizemore. Inside pass to Webb. Webb drives, shot up. It's good. As it was tapped at first by McKinney, I believe, and Webb retrieved it and put it up, 40 to 37. As Harmon needs help outside, gets it from Williams. Williams back to Harmon at the point, in the corner to John. Back to Jay at the point. Harmon jump shot up and off the front of the rim, tap inside by Gary Williams, getting beautiful position inside to get that tap, 40-39. And the Rebels, I believe, call a timeout with 4.39 left in the third quarter. The Rebels are on top 40 to 39. And we'll be back on your South County Sports Network. I'd like to use Kurt's, <laughs> Kurt's card one time to put in that machine, would you? Every time I hear that commercial, especially when I'm going to school, I'm saying, wow, Kurt's playing football. I'd like to have it just one time. Let us have it just one trip. One trip to Charleston here. All right, Clyde Sizemore. Gets it in for the Rebels. Mark Sizemore drives right, spins around, comes back outside with it. Brian Sizemore has it at the point right. Dribbling around the horn at the top of the key, looking for something to happen over the Brad House. Left, baseline left. He drives pass inside to Webb. Webb spins around, shot underneath, no good. Hout gets the rebound, shot up off the front of the rim, no good. And Jay McKinney finally pulls it down for Pineville. Here it comes. A minute, man. They pass it around. Stolen by Brad Hout. Away from Harmon. He drives in, shot up, and no good. And he's fouled by Harmon. If we can get Kurt's card, we'll take off to where do you want to go? To <laughs> Miami or. Uh, I believe we could pick any place we wanted to go, Butch. I think we could, we could buy any place we wanted to. <laughs> Name your country. Wyoming County happens to be proud of a Kurt Warner. He's done great things in this place. Tell me about it. Brian Sizemore gets it for the Rebels. Back out to Brad Hout. Shot from the deep point. Didn't hit anything, but his brother gets the rebound. Shot up and no good. But got Brad's rebound. But nothing there. Here comes Ray Harmon looking for some help at the point. Pass in deep corner to Jay McKinney. Jay dribbling around. Pass across the court to John. John inside to Jacob. Jacob shot up and good. Something they haven't been doing is going to Jacobs inside. I don't know whether it's the Rebels defense or they haven't been able to work it in there to him. At that time, Jacobs gets the points and the, uh, the Minutemen take the lead. 41-40. Here's a shot by Sizemore. No good. Type up. No good. And Jacobs gets a rebound. That is devastating. He brings it down. Here comes McKinney. Lays it up. Beautiful. Off the glass. Nice play by Jay McKinney on the inside. Laid it off the glass. As the Miniman take a three-point lead, stretching it out, 43 to 40. Mark Sizemore inside to Bart Hout, Bart back out to Mark Sizemore. 
Mark drives inside, jump shot up, and it's good. Had a lot of resistance from Jay McKinney and Gary Williams, but Mark puts it in. Here it comes down quickly to McKinney. Inside of Jacobs, he's up, shot blocked by Webb, and they call a foul against Howe. The block was good, but uh, Bud Howe didn't give him uh, enough room to come down. Mitch, that is a very, very big foul. That will be the fourth personal foul on Bud Howe. Team foul number one. And they're going to leave him in with four fouls. Coach Ellison figuring they need him in there. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in the third quarter, 43-42. Pineville on top, and Jacob shooting two shots. First one up, it's good. Which on the night, Jacob only has a total of five points, you know, and usually he averages 15 to 16 points a game. 44-42, next shot up, it's good, 45-42. The Rebels trying to do something against the press of the Minutemen. Out the half. Looked him on the head, but he gets it back. He brings it down across the timeline at the point. Jump shot up, and it is good. Rolled around. Took about a week, but it went in. 44-45. Brad Howe from the foul line. And here's Jay McKinney in the corner. Brings it back out to Williams. Williams over to Harmon. Harmon over to Hatfield. Back to Harmon. Back to Williams. Jump shot up and in and out. Tap by Jacobs. No good. Tap by Jacobs. No good. Struggle for it, and it goes out to the Rebels. Whew, a lot of action underneath. A lot of hustling on both teams' part. Mitch Stephon goes right here beneath us, and I tell you, we see some hands way up over that rim that time. Good ball game here in Mullen tonight, folks. 45-44. Pineville on top. Sizemore bounce pass to Hawk. Hawk over to Webb. Webb to Clyde. Clyde to Mark. Mark driving around. Jump shot up. And it is no good off the front of the rim. Tapped by the Rebels. No good. And knocked out of bounds by the Minutemen. Now Mark Hawk came around and went underneath and tried to reverse layup. And went off the front of the rim. And it was smacked out of bounds by Pineville. Here's Clyde Sizemore at the point. Over to Mark Sizemore, in the corner to Brad Howe, to Sizemore, to Brad Howe. Pass baseline left to Mark Sizemore, deep corner to Webb, jump shot up and good by Tommy Webb from about 12 feet out. 46-45, Rebels regained the lead. There's a pass to Williams, almost stolen by Sizemore. And Jay McKinney having some trouble, gets it out to Harmon, into Fred Hatfield, jump shot up and no good. And he gets his own rebound, Jay McKinney gets it. Reverse layup, beautiful. Chalk it up for Jay McKinney. And Bible takes the lead 47-46 with one minute left in this third quarter. Brad Sizemore over to Brad Hout. Bounce pass inside, stolen by the Minutemen and stolen back by Hout, but Hout fouled Jay McKinney as he tried to get it back. And a little ice out on the court. Don Knuckles, a name you've heard a few times. Now the assistant principal here at Mullins. Uh, the game and gets the ice off the court. Rebels trail 47 46. 57 seconds left in the third quarter. Coming in is Randy Hurst. Coming in for Bart Howe. Also coming in is Bill Bishop for Brad Howe. So the Rebels, uh, Coach Ellison trying, I believe, to counter with some height. Mitch, the personal foul is on Brad Howe. That will be his fourth personal foul. Course, Team no. foul number two. Both Hout brothers now have four personal. Obviously, that's why they took them out. Four fouls against both of them. Uh, with over uh, 57 seconds left in the third quarter. Now we have both principals of the, uh, both high schools out helping Don Ruckers, Raymond Rose, along with Sonny Phillips, trying to get this up so no one will get hurt on this. You can hear the crowd getting into the ball game as they usually do. Believe it or not, it's not a capacity crowd. It's full, but not like we're used to seeing between Mullins and Pineville. Here comes Harmon. He's at the point. Holds up his left hand. Sizzling for an offensive play. Gets it to John McKinney. Back to Harmon at the point. Baseline right to Jay. Jay back out to Harmon. Out front. In the corner to John. Back to Harmon. Back to John. Inside pass to Jacobs. Up and good. Now they're working Jacobs. Now they're getting it to Jacobs. Relatively easy. And that play. 49-46. 30 seconds left. 
in this third quarter. Clyde Sizemore over to Mark Sizemore. He drives, stops. This can help face to Clyde Sizemore. Clyde drives inside, scoops it up, didn't hit anything, missed it all. And Jacob gets the rebound. Here comes the Minutemen with a chance to stretch it. Spinning move by Jay McKinney. And they call a foul. Minutemen getting ready, looks like, to erupt. Puts the personal foul is on Tommy Webb. That will be his fourth personal foul. No, sh no basket on the play. Nine seconds left in the third quarter. Pineville on top by three, 39 to 46. Inbounds play goes to Hatfield. Hatfield needing help, gives it to McKinney. McKinney from the deep corner, three-point range, it's good. Woo! He will eat you alive from that position. And that's the end of the third quarter as a Pineville. Minutemen, and they marked it up on the wrong scoreboard. The Minutemen take a six-point lead, and we'll do flex their muscles just a little as we begin this fourth quarter. They lead 52 to 46, and they're working with uh, the inside and the outside. Jay McKinney from outside, and uh, then they get it into Jacobs on the inside. The last couple of minutes of this third quarter, and that's how they've gotten this lead. Let's look at some statistics. The leading score for Pineville is Jay McKinney with 21 points. Six of those points being from the three-point range. The leading score for Mullins is Tommy Webb with 15. Clyde Sizemore with 12. And also, Gary Williams has 11 for Pineville. Mark Sizemore brings it in to Clyde. Clyde at the point over to Mark. Mark brings it in, jump shot up. It's good. Beautiful shot by Mark Sizemore. And a foul inside against the Minutemen. It looks like it's going to be against Jay McKinney. I'm not sure. Of course, I'm never sure about anything. Until the, yep, there it was. Jay McKinney. That'll be Jay's second. Rebels get it back in bounds. 48-52. Brian Sizemore looks inside, passes it to Webb. He drives, spins around, blocked by Jacobs. Out to Sizemore. Sizemore drives. For walking. And Pineville gets it back, leading with, by four, 52 to 48, 7.45 left in this uh, contesto. Here comes Harmon, brings it down, looks inside, pass over to McKinney. McKinney then guarded closely by Sizemore, over to John McKinney on the left side, back out to Harmon at the deep point right to Jay McKinney to Harmon inside to John. John looking for some help. Been guarded closely by Bart Hout. Over to McKinney. Jump shot up off the rim. Mark Sizemore gets the rebound. That was Jay McKinney shooting, missing. And Mark Sizemore gets the rebound. 7-14. Clock running 48 to 52. Minimum lead as Clyde Sizemore is at the point. Passing to Mark Sizemore. Baseline right. Griffin backing in to Hatfield. Turns around. Looks for shot. It's not there. Clyde Sizemore at the point. Over to Hout. Back to Sizemore. And he walks it around the horn, over to Mark Sizemore, jump shot way outside, misses it all, and John McKinney gets the rebound over to Harmon. Harmon brings it across. Jay McKinney jump shot up, off the front of the rim, and Tommy Webb gets the rebound, fast break, going Webb and Sizemore, Sizemore lays it up. It's blocked by Jay McKinney. Jay saved two for the Minuteman. Fast pass inside, stolen by Harmon. He drives, shot up, no good. Top by Jacobs is no good. They call a foul on Jacobs. Woo! I'm telling you the truth. You need, you need two announcers for this game because it is so much action. Jacobs came in and looked like he had a beautiful top in, but he fouled in the process. I tell you, Butch, he came flying out of nowhere from the foul line. The official... Well, Kennedy standing right there, caught him for climbing up on the back. I tell you, the fans are starting to get in this contest now. It's like we'll have a great finish to this ball game. All right, Clyde Sizemore over to Brad Howe. Brad looking for help. Back to Clyde. Clyde driving inside, lays it up, and it's no good. Intimidated that time by Jacobs. They get it out quickly. Gary Williams out front. Pass right to McKinney. McKinney looks inside, nothing there. Now underneath, all alone is Hatfield. He scores. 
this pass by Jay McKinney unselfishly blasted that ball, a bazooka pass inside the Hatfield. Hatfield held on to it, almost steals it back to Mark Sizemore. Mark Sizemore drives inside, passes to Bloodhout. Bloodhout back to Bloodhout. Now Brad drives, passes back out to the point to Clyde Sizemore. 54-48, 5.38 left here in the fourth quarter. There's Clyde Sizemore, bounce pass left, baseline left to Bart. Ah, back to Sizemore. Sizemore, around the horn, looking for some help, holds up his hand, backs back up towards the half court line. Dribbles right, pass right to Mark Sizemore. Bounce pass in, beautiful pass to Hout. Off the front of the rim, bounces in, Bart Hout with another little shuffle pass by Mark Sizemore. 50 to 54, Pineville on top, 509. Left in this game. Pass inside to Jacobs. Jacobs spins around, almost stolen by Hout. A pass inside to John McKinney. Beautiful pass by Jacobs to John McKinney. 56 to 50. Pineville maintaining that six-point cushion. Timeout for the Rebels. We'll be back on your South County Sports Network. And it doesn't take much of that. And when you combine that with the same fast and friendly service, a feature by itself, why, each day is a delicious matinee. And we're sure you're going to be running an encore and come back for more. We're Bud and Henry's Restaurant, right in downtown Mullins. Brantford Stone Incorporated is proud to be among the sponsors for this game. We know that these teams are do-everything teams. A little like us is what we do. We sell stone, sand, concrete, stone of all grades. Six to 50. Rebels will be inbounding at Mark Sizemore. We'll bring it in to Clyde Sizemore. As he brings it across the half-court line, Rebels need to score here in a desperate sort of way. There's Mark Sizemore driving inside, holds up, back out to Clyde Sizemore, 444. Left, Clyde rounding the horn, bounce pass, baseline left to Bart Hawk, inside pass to Hawk again, lays it up and good into the final play. That was Brad Hawk bringing it down the baseline, passed it into his brother Bart Hawk. Bart laid it in and was fouled. And they say the points were good, and that makes it 56 52. With 4.34. Personal foul was called on John McKinney, his third. Team foul number five. Great pass. That's been good by Bart Hout. The Hout brothers. 4.31. Gary Williams bringing it down. Looking for some help. Then brought it closer by Bart Hout. But he puts a move on him. Drives inside. Jump shot up and off the rim. Hout gets the rebound. Bart Hout gets a good rebound for the Rebels. As Williams shot, shot rolled around, and Clyde Sizemore gets it, brings it down. Mark Sizemore on the right side, dribbling, looking. And you got to watch him. He's got a beautiful little pass. He gets inside to uh, Bart Hawk every now and then off that right side. There's Sizemore looking inside. That same pass to Hawk again. It's up. It's off the back of the rim this time. Hawk gets the rebound. Jump shot up. It's good. Off the backboard. Bart Hawk playing a phenomenal final five minutes. As Coach Stewart wants a timeout with three minutes and 49 seconds left. It's the Minutemen 56, the Rebels 55. We'll be back on the South County Sports Center. Call 683-3293. Here comes Gary Williams bringing it down. They lead by one. Over to Jay McKinney. Looks for help inside. Trying to get it to Jacobs. Tight defense put on by Mark Sizemore. They get it to Jacobs. He drives inside. Shot up. And they call charging against Jacobs. Brad Hawk. Posted up underneath Jacobs. And that's going to be four, I believe, against James. Yes, Miss, that'll be four. I tell you what, he got around Mark Sizemore, but Brad Hout slid down and under him and took the uh, charging foul. And the Rebels will get the ball out of bounds. I tell you one thing, there is some good talent on this ball on this ball court tonight, Tim, on both sides. Uh, Pineville obviously very strong. Rebels are showing something uh, that I'm sure Coach Olsen didn't see, and that's a good outside shot, a 
lot of penetration and a lot more quickness than might have been anticipated. Yes, Coach, I tell you, they are going after the ball when it's up on the board, especially on the offensive board. As Bill and maybe team, they have just a little bit more finesse and a little bit more hunger for the battle when it's up on that rim. But both of these clubs have a lot of confidence in what they can do. There's a big shot outside by Mark Sizemore. Nothing but net. 57 56. 3 21. Here comes Gary. Williams brings it down. Nice pass right to Jerry Brown in the contest now. Nice pass inside to McKinney. He lays it in. Beautiful teamwork by Brown and Jay McKinney. Now that looks good. I love to see that. 58-57, one point lead now for the Minutemen. Three minutes exactly left. Brad Hout passes inside to Sizemore. Sizemore's jump shot up. It's good. Mark Sizemore taking control. 59 to 58, I love it. What a game, 246. Here comes Gary, he drives in. Nice layup by Williams, it's good. Nice penetration by Gary Williams. Split the seam of the defense, went in for an uncontested layup, Butch. Gary's been doing that, and they haven't been falling for him. Now they're beginning to fall. 60 to 59, here's a jump shot outside by the Rebels. Taps around, How gets the rebound, it's blocked, and he's fouled. Whew. Now, Brad Hout went up with the shot, missed it, followed his shot up, something that's uh, a very, one of the most fundamentals of, ba of basketball is to follow up your shot. He did that, got the rebound, went up again, and was fouled by Jerry Brown. Much as we've seen there, as Brad Half went up for the shot, it come off. Tommy Webb stuck a hand in and barely tipped it back to him. That's what they've been doing all night long. The Rebels have been sneaking a man inside, tipping the ball back outside. Nothing but polyester. Brad Houck. By the way, his father, Gary Houck, was the guy that I interviewed here at halftime. He's the ninth grade coach. Next shot up, it's off the back of the rim. Rebound, scramble, and Jacobs retrieves it. This game is as it should be. It's all tied up, 60 apiece. 218, clock running. Deep corner to McKinney. Back to Harmon, to Hatfield. Back out to Williams, almost stolen by Sizemore. Back to Hatfield, jump shot up. Not, didn't hit anything, but Jacobs gets it back and lays it in. James Jacob gives uh, the Minutemen a two-point edge, 62 to 60. There's Clyde Sizemore over to Mark. Mark looking inside, past the house. He's up, shot no good off the back of the rims. Ball knocked almost out of bounds, but saved beautifully by Hatfield. Uh-oh, pass it over to John McKinney. John steps on the line, out of bounds. Now Fred Hatfield did a marvelous job of saving that ball in the corner and flipped it in. I believe John was uh, possibly standing on the baseline. So the Rebels get another shot. Yes, Butch, at first I was writing something in the book, and, it, and I thought they might have caught a foul on Brad Hatfield at first. But as you said, Fred Hatfield showing great speed, which he did during football season for the Minutemen, to run that ball down in the corner and to flip it back out to John McKinney. Excellent speed for Fred Hatfield. 145. I go on top 62 to 60. Mark Sizemore will bring it in underneath his own bucket. 145 left in this game. And what a good one. Brian Sizemore gives it in the corner back out to Mark Hout. Back, back inside to Hout. He scores! Brian Sizemore bounced it into Bart Hout. And he laid it in, but found a lot of room underneath on that one, 62 to 62. Gary Williams up front, guarded tightly by Brad Hout. And here comes Jay McKinney driving inside, shot up, no good. And they call a foul, I believe, on maybe Mark Sizemore. Yes, the personal foul is on Mark Sizemore. He's third person, team foul number four. But tonight, Jay McKinney has 23 points to lead the Pineville Minutemen. And last week, uh, Jay had 22 points against Bramble. They come to Miniman, they're bringing him down. Jay Williams driving inside, goes around the horn, lays it up. It's blocked by Bart Hawk and out of bounds. Uh oh, they're going to call technical. Yes, they do. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Now, let me tell you what happened here. The ball is knocked out of bounds. Gary Williams said something, but the very second that Gary said it, he, he knew, he said, uh-oh, and he couldn't take it back. You know, he, he wanted to take it back, you know, but it was a little late. I couldn't see, but the team well, had me blocked there. It was just excited, you know, but uh, I guess the officials, as tight as they are in this game, didn't want to hear anything. 
The score all tied up 62 to 62. There's a timeout with 120 left. We'll be back on the South County Sports Network. The fine folks at Charlie's Pharmacy on Howard Avenue in downtown Mullins know there's nothing more important to you than your family's health. Dependable and reliable, that's the way they do business. They always have. You can depend on Charlie Boy to have all your prescription needs, vitamins, convalescent aids, and health and beauty items. Don't take chances with your family's health. Bring your prescriptions to Charlie's Pharmacy. Call 294-5447. If you are looking for a great tasting meal at a reasonable price, then you need to go to the Cow Shed Motel and Restaurant in East Pineville. The Cow Shed also provides quality motel rooms with wall-to-wall -wall carpeting and color TV. Call the Cow Shed at 732-7000, and they're proud to be among the sponsors of this game. The Cow Shed Motel and Restaurant, located in East Pineville. High School, the Mullins Rebels 62, the Pineville Minutemen 62, as there's a technical call against the Pineville Minutemen, Gary Williams, and I'll have to defend Gary on that one. I mean, <laughs> the official was probably right, possibly, but uh, Gary didn't mean to do it. <laughs> he, just, he just got caught up in it. And here's the shot by Mark Sizemore. It'll be two shots. Shot up. No good. Big foul shot. Here he gets another one. But you know, with this three-point shot now, nothing is ever over. You know, you used to you could sort of figure things out, but it's a little bit harder. Here's the next shot up. It's good by Mark Sizemore. 63 to 62. One minute, 20 seconds left in this game. Brian Sizemore gets it from Mark. Clyde between the legs. Then guarded close by Williams, drive inside to Webb. Webb drive shot up, it's no good. They call walking against Tommy Webb. Tommy tried a little spin move and got caught spinning too much. Here comes Gary Williams, brings it down. He's at the deep point, dribbling with his right hand, passing to John McKinney. John looks for help inside, nothing there. Williams drive, shot up, and he redeems himself, it's good. If he points to the Mullins crowd, like, okay, I gave you one and I got it back. 64, 63, 50 seconds exactly left in this ball game. Mark Sizemore, pass inside the house, jump shot up, it's off the front of the iron, no good. Here comes Fred Hatfield, rambling, passing to McKinney, lays it up, it's good, but they call walking. They call, they call walking against McKinney. Jerry tried a little scoop shot, and the official said he took an extra step. That should have been a short two points on that one, but he was wide open. Yep, wide open for the layup. Here comes Clyde Sizemore. Rebels trail by 1.28 seconds left. Mark Sizemore, jump shot up, nothing. And here come the minute, and they get the rebound. Jerry McKinney driving, pulls up the dribble, holds it up, gets it out to John. John over to Gary Williams, 15 seconds left. Five on top, 64-63, and they call foul against the Rebels. This they fell around, fouled the wrong person there. Absolutely. They should have went after Jacobs, who the other night shot poorly against Bramler. I believe he only shot one for five against wow. the million there. You know, I keep forgetting about this three-point shot, so it's 64-63, and uh, McKinney will be going to the line. But with this three-point job, man, you could, uh, you never out of the game. It's a timeout, and we'll be back with 14 seconds left on your South County Sports Time Final minute, man, on top, 64 to 63. I was not putting James Jacobs down, but you don't want to foul one of the McKinney brothers because they're automatic books. The only reason I said foul him is because you want to put the man who's not shooting too well from the foul line up there with 14 seconds left. So I hope the fans didn't take that in the wrong way. Well, I certainly did. Thanks a lot, Butch. You're welcome. 64, 63, 14 seconds left. And the middleman will go to the line with a chance of uh, making themselves a three-point lead. Jay McKinney talking to the official about that walking call, shaking his head. The official laughing. All in fun. Bishop in now for the Rebels. There's 
John McKinney shooting. John dribbles, looks, shoots, it's up, it's good. All right, they call him semi-automatic. 65 to 63, 14 seconds left. He spins it, bounces, dribbles, stops, shot up. No good, Webb gets the rebound. Sizemore brings it down, 11 seconds, 10 seconds, across the half court line. Motions for the offense to get going, six seconds. Five seconds, jump shot from way outside, off the front of the rim. Jay McKinney gets the rebound, and there's a foul, and the Rebels lose this contest. The Minutemen win it, 65 to 63. What a game! What a ball game! It's I believe the officials going to end it there with no foul, so we'll end up 65 to 63. All right, Ty Sizemore had a shot at it right near the end. And the Rebels missed it. Jay McKinney got the a very important rebound. And the Pine Minutemen men win at 65 to 63. We'll try to interview the coaches here. And we'll be back on C9. We're back here at the Marlins Gymnasium where the Pine Minutemen men just won an exciting contest. 65 to 63 over the Marlins Rebels. Looking at some statistics for the Pine Minutemen. men, they were letting scoring again by Jay McKinney with 23. Gary Williams had 15. James Jacobs had 10. John McKinney had 8. Fred Hatfield come off the bench for 6 points. And Chris Mayhew had 1 point. The turnovers for the Pine Minute Minutemen was they had 16. They had 35 rebounds. They were 9 for 16 from the charity stripe. Committed 17 fouls. Looking at the statistics for the Marlins Rebels, they were led in scoring by Mark Sizemore with 18, Tommy Webb, the sophomore, with 15, Clyde Sizemore with 12, and Bart Houck with 12. The Rebels turned the ball over 14 times, grabbed 32 rebounds, turned, had 17 fouls whistled against them tonight, and was 10 for 16 from the charity strike. Very exciting contest. Some people didn't believe that this would be a close one because Pineville de defeating Bramwell Wednesday night, 62 to 60. With Mullins screams in Bramwell, Bramwell had beat him by a score of maybe 20 points. A great contest tonight. The fans that were here to witness this one saw a great one. Again, with the Pineville Minutemen winning 65 to 63. In a moment, we're going to try to get a word with Coach Bob Stewart and Ron Ellison, both coaches tonight. Butch down right now trying to round them up. You know, they're excited. Especially Coach Stewart, you know, he come off a big win Wednesday night. His team may have been a little flat over that. Especially if you come off a big win. They're making any excuses. Both teams played well. Mullins come in, give the Pineville Minutemen a good contest. These clubs will meet one more time in Pineville sometime in January, I believe. And you can be assured that both of them will be in a hunt for that Wyoming County sectional tournament, which will be held at the Armory in March. And both teams trying to get, get into the state tournament. Pineville, who was there last year, before getting defeated in the semifinals by Bramwell, both clubs look excellent tonight. Right now, we're going to take a 60-second commercial and send it back to your South County Sports League, Marlins Gymnasium, with Pineville pulling out a 65-63 to victory, but still down on the court trying to write up Coach Stewart and Coach Ellison. We'll talk a little bit about the Wyoming County Christmas tournament that will be held in Buttersville this week. Coming up down at the Bellisville Rough Rider Gymnasium, it will be Mullins, Oceana, Bellisville, and Gilbert in this one. It will be the Christmas tournament. C92 will be live Tuesday night to carry this. Also, Monday night from 9 to 10, we will be carrying a sports talk show with all six coaches of the Wyoming County. This one will be live Monday night at 9 to 10 o'clock. Again, we'd like to thank Keith Cook for his uh, efforts in videotaping this game. We'll have this on tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on Channel 3 of the, of the Pineville Cable Company. This is going to work out well. I tell you, I like that because this is going to give some kids exposure and also for the people who cannot get out to the contest. I believe this will enhance our players here in the county. And also, it may give a little recognition to some people who may not have got this. Again, Butch down on the court. We're going to take a 60-second timeout. This is C92, your South County Sports Gymnasium where the Pineville Minutemen 
have defeated the Marlins Rebels by a score of 65 to 63. And now we'd like to go down to the court side with Butch McNeely, who has James Jacobs and Jared Brown down at court side to you, Butch. Thank you, Tim. Another good contest between the Marlins Rebels and Pineville Minutemen. James Jacobs to my left, Jared Brown to my right. James, uh, give me your assessment of the ball game. Well, Marlins is always tough playing at home. We figured they'd play a tough game, but we tried to get our outside shots so we could get our inside game working. So, but they played, they played real good defense. We turned the ball over a lot. And luckily, we came out with the win. We didn't give up. Jerry, you hustled a lot as you did in that game against Brownwood. What, uh, near the end down there, it seems like y'all were looking to go more inside to James. Yeah, they were uh, starting to double team up on Jay and Gary on the outside. So we figured if we could get a couple quick buckets inside to James, to sort of draw him inside and maybe open Jay back up for another outside jumper. Was Mullins uh, as tough as you thought they'd be? Yeah, they're, they're always tough at home. I mean, this is, a, this is one of the hardest places in the county to play besides Pineville. James, what did you think uh, about early in the game all the fouls being called? Did you realize early that the officials were, were going to call it tight? I didn't think they would call it that tight. They usually let us play, especially when it's a rivalry, you know, in the county. But they called it real tight, and I should have picked it up earlier than what I did. But well, what do you, who do you have next? Herndon at Herndon. Okay. Fellas, thanks for coming out. I know y'all need to get back in the dressing room and get dressed, but thanks for coming up. All right. We'll see you. All right. Back to you, Tim. All right. We will take a 30-second timeout. This is your South County Sports Net Mullins Gymnasium, and Neely is down at courtside with Coach Bob Stewart of the Pineville Minutemen. Coach Stewart, uh, another good ball game. Well, thank you, but our kids hung in. Uh, I think we uh, were behind a big part of the second half. Mullins played a good game. Our kids came through and played a good game, and... Uh, it's tough to win at Mullins. What were you trying to do now that in the end there? Uh, you uh, looked like you were going to Jacobs a little more. You're right. We, found, we got James moving a little bit and got into our offense and uh, got him open inside. And was the Rebels as tough as you expected? They're always tough, especially at home. Now, they have some strong kids, physically strong, and uh, I thought they played a very, a very good game. Well, your team's had two extremely close ball games. Is, uh, is this good or bad? Well, it's good if we play well. We play in spurts again, but uh, our kids are experienced. And, uh, you know, Gary Williams, a four-year starter, and, and most of the other kids have played a lot, and they feel like they can win the close games. Coach, congratulations. Thank you, Butch. Back to you, Tim. All right, Butch is going to go try to round up Coach Ellison. Right now, we'd like to take, take this time out and talk about the Marshall Thundering Herd. Who is out in Pocatello, Idaho? They left yesterday going for the Division I AA championship. I tell you, I've watched two of these three games and they have been just terrific. I went down and watched them play James Madison and Weber State, and I tell you, they just looked impressive. And then last week, I watched them on Channel 3 out of, uh, out of Huntington, and it looked good again against the Appalachian State Ball Club, which they had lost one time. They will be playing a team northeast Louisiana, and you can see that game Saturday night. Catch the action after you watch the Pineville Marlins game. Turn it over to ESPN and watch the Marshall Thundering Herd go for the Division I AA Championship. That will be on ESPN at 10 o'clock. And right now we'd like to take a 60-second timeout and send it back to your South County Sports Network C90 Gymnasium. And Butch McNeely has Coach Ellison, Mark Sizemore, and Clyde Sizemore, the Mullins Rebels. Down to you, Butch. Thank you, Tim. Coach Ellison, your first game of the season against the number one team in the state. I think you've got to be fairly happy with your boys. Uh, yes, we're really pleased with what we did. We felt like uh, we really should have won the ball game. You know, we uh, didn't get uh, a few of the breaks we needed right at the end, didn't put a few of the baskets uh, in that we should have. Our uh, last uh, play that we ran wasn't uh, what we set up, but yet uh, I'm very pleased. Even though uh, it, it's tough to lose a ball game like this, you know, first game uh, of the season for us, and Pineville already had one under the belt, so uh, we feel very pleased with our play. And I, I'm just overjoyed with the way the uh, kids play team ball tonight. I tell you, they, uh, they went out and they worked their tails off tonight, and they worked together, and that's what I've, we've emphasized for the last five weeks in the preseason. So 
Uh, you know, we're just extremely pleased with the way they played tonight. You told me before um, the game started that you were going to try, you, you definitely were going to go inside, and you just hoped you could, and it looks like you achieved that. Right. Uh, I knew that we uh, had the inside ball players this year, and we've got some great uh, ball players outside this year also. Mark uh, Sizemore did a super job. Clyde penetrated well. Clyde Sizemore just did a super job for us. Tommy Webb, Bart Houck in the middle. I'm just pleased with uh, all the boys. Brad uh, Houck just hustled himself to death tonight, so, uh, you know, it, we're, we're taking this positively. We're not, we're not going to look at it from a negative standpoint. We go into a tournament next Tuesday night, and we're going into that tournament to try to win that. And we, we truly think we can now. Tell us about that. You have one heck of a schedule coming up, don't you? Right. We play uh, Tuesday night at Oceana at 7 o'clock in the Baileysville Invitational uh, Tournament, and uh, we also then will play the, uh, you know, depends how we do, but uh, we'll either play Gilbert or Baileysville the next night. And then in January, first week of January, on January the 5th, we have Mount View. Uh, Two nights later, we played Beckley at the Armory in Beckley, and then uh, two nights later on a Saturday night here, we come back with Independence. So we've got a tremendous schedule down, you know, in front of us. But uh, I tell you, the kids are up to the challenge. We're playing well right now. Uh, we're just getting the season started. We're really looking forward to improvement as the season progresses, and uh, we're going to be right there. Final, finals here in good steps right now. I guarantee you. Coach Linslop coming out with me. Uh, I have Mark Sizemore to my left. Brian Sizemore to my right. Mark. Uh, you were getting that outside shot today. Yeah, I was surprised during season, pre-season and everything. I, my, shot, my shoot wasn't coming along very good because I was adjusting from football to basketball. and I'm, I'm really pleased with my shooting outside. I'm the most surprised one in the whole team. Yeah. It looked like you, know, you had Bart Houck on the inside there, and you looked like you were moving away, and you have a little shuffle pass back to Bart. Uh, have you all practiced that? Well, uh, in pre-season pre or in practice, I throw a lot of bad passes inside, and Coach Elson uh, taught me how to do that. I mean, look away and throw in, which has helped me a lot in my inside passing. Mark, good game. Thank you, sir. Clyde, you were penetrating early, and you were missing some of your shots, and I was, it looked like you may stop shooting it, but you kept it up, and you finally started sinking that driving layup. Well, yes, I was driving in quite a bit. And I just, the shot wasn't falling, so I just kept it alive. I can't blow up because I'm the leader of the team, and I just can't blow up. I've got to keep penetrating, keep working hard. I was talking to James Jacobs and Jared Brown talking about how the officials were obviously going to call this game very closely. Were you aware of that early? Yes, I was very aware of that. It was going to be every t real touchy call fouls at every time because everything had to be real careful, and we got in real bad foul trouble. And they got a little bit of foul trouble first half. So they was calling it pretty close. Although you lost this game, you're playing a team like Pineville. Is this giving you a little more confidence? Yes, it really does. We proved to a lot of people who came in this ball game. Everybody's telling us we were supposed to lose by 30 points. And they're number one team in the state. And we proved a lot of stuff to a lot of people. Glad you played a good game. Congratulations. Thank you, Butch. Right. Ben, back to you. All right, Butch. We would like to thank Keith Cook, who is state.